Oof. Greece. It's my first time here. You guys have made quite an impression. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be honest. I've visited a lot of places. I'm going to preface this talk with this. And I think Greece probably has one of the most liveliest, happiest crowds that I've seen. I mean, we haven't even started the talk, and you guys are up there just, you know, chugging down mojitos. You know? <laughs> Good job. Um, so we've, we've heard a lot today. Like, we've seen and we've heard a lot today. Um, you know, we've heard so much about AI, about how deep learning is, like, revolutionizing every field that it's entering. Um, whether it's self-driving cars, autonomous planes, you know, what we just saw with quick draw, right? You can just draw something and the computer can predict uh, what you're trying to draw. I mean, computers have gotten better than humans at recognizing objects. Think about that. Computers, given like a water bottle, will probably recognize that water bottle more times than you will recognize that water bottle in the wild. So it could be a water bottle hidden in a forest that you might not see and the computer will still pick up on that. And so what we're really getting at here is that AI and machine learning are changing the way we do business with each other. They're changing the way we interact with each other. And that's what business is about. It's about creating connections and interactions within people. And if we can change that, then we're changing business as a whole. So we're going we're gonna to backtrack about five years ago uh, when I was a uh, bit, bit shorter, probably also a bit skinnier. Um, 15-year-old who had no clue what AI and ML was. In fact, if you brought up the concept of artificial intelligence, I'd, I'd have no clue, but I'd also tell you that you're probably kind of stupid to think that you could learn it by yourself. Because AI five years ago was this incredible concept that only people at, you know, in PhD programs at like the most incredible schools would ever understand. And that's so not true. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you that, and I'm here to tell you how how I sort of figure that out. So five years ago, you know, I'm from Afghanistan. I was born there. I was raised in Chicago. And my parents, as you know, immigrant parents, want me to sort of retain some of my culture. And I had forgotten the language a little bit. And I, you know, anytime my aunts and uncles would say hello to me, salam, in, in Pashto, I'd be like, hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> typical English. And so they, they said, you know, we got to go back. We need you to see where you come from. And so the, the summer after my freshman year in high school, I, you know, booked out three months for summer vacation, and I went to Afghanistan. And the, I, had, I had ideas as to what I was going to expect, right? The media does a pretty bad job of telling you what, you know, a situation is in a specific country. Um, and, you know, the typical phone calls my mom would have with her family, you know, in Afghanistan, they gave me a little hint as to what to expect. But quite honestly, when I got there, the best way to describe what I saw was a living hell that people just dealt with. And, and I'll, I'll get into that a little, bit, a little bit more, but I got sick when I was there. I got, I got pretty sick. Uh, the water isn't clean. As someone from the States, I guess, you know, privilege of having purified water is something that you don't, you know, you take for granted until you get really sick because there's a little bit of, a little bit of bacteria in your water. And I tried to go to the hospital and it was very easy for me because I had, you know, I had the be-all, end-all of things. I had the dollar bill. And so I walked, you know, my parents walked me in with my uncles and, you know, they opened up an American passport with a couple, you know, a couple hundred dollar bills and we immediately skipped that massive line that went around the curb, down the street, and into a couple, like, into a couple shops. We immediately skipped all of that just because of privilege, because of the privilege that I had. And that was, that was my first experience of truly understanding how different my world was, right? My world at home was so much different from my world in my other home. And, and being able to see that, being able to experience that, that was, that was just the first step in a very long journey that would, you know, eventually bring me to here, right? Right now, standing in front of you guys. And so, you know, I got treated and I got a lot better. And then my aunt at the time was, you know, was dealing with uh, breast cancer. And so, you know, she was trying to go to the hospital and she didn't have the dollar bill. And so instead she had to wait through the lines. And then there was another instance where I went to a party and a kid got sick. And then they tried to take the kid to the hospital. And there was that same long line at another hospital in another province. And he still couldn't get the attention he needed. And I came back from that trip three months later com completely different. I was, I was oblivious to the privilege that I had as an individual in the States. But more importantly, 
I was more aware. I was more, I was thirsty. I was, I, I was aware of what was going on and I wanted to do something because there was no way that I was going to let a little kid that couldn't afford medication or couldn't afford the healthcare that he needed or wasn't able to have a dollar bill, I wasn't going to let that stop him from getting the medical attention he needed. Because quite frankly, that same infrastructure, that same ideology, was the same ideology that killed my grandparents, and the grandparents before them, and the grandparents before them. And I thought it was unjust for me as someone that could do something about it to just sit and be okay with it. So I came back from, from Afghanistan, and I immediately started looking into what can I do as a 15-year-old with you know, relatively decent computing skills, what can I do to try to help people back there? And the, the one thing that kept popping up time after time was this concept of artificial intelligence, and it was booming. IBM Watson had just come out, it had just beat uh, Jeopardy, so, you know, the, you know, beat two of the best Jeopardy players in the world, and people all around the world were talking about it. Artificial intelligence, this. Artificial intelligence, that. Artificial intelligence, this. People were, were worried about their jobs. People were worried about what it was going to do to their families. You know, we had Terminator-like pictures circulating the internet. And so I, I was interested. You know, I said, what, what is this concept that has for so long been so elusive to the, the general public? And I later learned that artificial intelligence or really machine learning can be, can as, as simply put, can just be stated as you're taking a ton of data and you're feeding it to an algorithm and you sort of want something out of that algorithm and that algorithm is going to sort of figure out a pattern that can help you reliably make the connection between your input and your output. And so I thought about that and I said, well, let's, let's do something with that in the medical sphere. And so what I ended up doing um, was I took a large data set of mammograms, breast cancer, that my aunt had. Um, and these data sets were labeled. They told us exactly where the tumors were, what type of tumor it was, um, and how it, could be, how it could be treated. And we, t we took these algorithms that were so typically being used at you know, you know, beating Jeopardy uh, game winners and being used in finance and agriculture. And I said, let's take this data that we have. We want an output, which is essentially telling us, uh, you know, does this person have benign or malignant tumors? Is, is, does this person have a cancerous tumor or not? Um, and let's, uh, let's use that data. And so after a ton of refinement and you know, working through it, I had built the first version of what was going to become the most accurate, most efficient, better than humans in real time and cheapest way to diagnose tumors based off of a mammogram. And this was all because I went on a trip and I saw the interactions that I was having with other people based off of who I was and I came back and I said, you know, there needs to be something done with this. So the AI provided that opportunity. Now, that, that same concept can be applied to companies as well. And here's the reason why it's so powerful for companies and businesses to be using machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's that anything that has data, anything, can be turned into actionable insights. So think your production data, your employee productivity data. If you're in production, you probably have sensors on your machine, that data. We can take that data and we can turn it into insights to tell us this machine's probably going to fail in two weeks. You might want to get this replaced now because it's cheaper. Or this employee is kind of slacking off. He doesn't really work well with this person. Right? We, can, we can get those type of insights from this data. And that makes us all better in regards to interacting with each other and interacting with our customers because our customers get a better experience. Now, back, back when I did this five years ago, it was a lot harder. Computing power was tough because you needed a lot of computers to do this. And there weren't any open source libraries that would let you do this. I mean, there were a couple, but they weren't that great, and documentation wasn't that great as well. So what was supposed to be a relatively short project turned into something that would take two to three years to fully develop and turn into a company. But we have tools like TensorFlow. We have tools like the Google Cloud that make all of this so much easier. Right? In a couple lines of code, you can create a classifier to identify the difference between a cat and a dog. And if you don't have the computing power to train that, just ship your data set and your code up to the cloud and just let the cloud handle all of it. In fact, Google provides a Cloud Vision API so that you don't even have to do any of the training yourself. You just give it the images and it'll give you those actionable insights right back instantly. Now, 
because this because it's so low, right? It provides an advantage for companies that use it, right? It's it's new, people are hearing about it now, but it's also so accessible. And what, what that really leads to is that right now we have so many AI companies, companies that use AI to do a specific task. I mean, you can have a basic messenger, and then you can have messenger with AI. That's, that's a completely new thing. But in a couple of years, that's not going to be the case, because AI is going to be used everywhere. Everyone's going to be using AI. Everyone's going to be using data analytics. Everyone's going to be using data science to create actionable insights. You're not an AI company anymore. You're just a company. AI is no longer going to be the differentiator between the good and the bad companies. It's just going to be a common thread amongst all companies. Because if you're not using it, you're probably not going to be able to compete with the people that are using it. And so it's, it's necessary to jump on now when other people aren't. So you get that head start, you get that advantage. And there, you know, the tools that are available online, the resources that are available online, they're all there for, you know, for all of us to be able to do this so much easier. Five years ago, this was, it was a two-year project. It can, now, it can now literally become a 10-day project because of the resources that we have. And so with this information, think about where your weakest spot is or where you have the most data, where you're congregating the most data, whether that's in production, employees, sales, marketing, advertisement, whatever. Think about what you want from that data because there are hidden patterns within that data that we can't see as individuals but that computers can. And think about how you can take that data and and make it so that you can use that data to help you as, a, as an organization, but more importantly, to help your customers. Because it's all about impact, right? It's all about what can you do for your customers to make them happier, to make them more productive, to make them better, right? And by, by becoming a better company, you're helping your customers become better people. Thank you.